So here we are, guys. We're up to two, two, one. I'm going to call this, nickname it, Spinner Math. I'm hoping to develop that idea for you. But the real other idea is reference angles. Now there's a little spin on that. We need to have our 30, 60, 90 rules down pat. We also need to have our 45, 45, 45, 45, 90 rules down pat. So that being said, there's a little twist. So here's a 30, 60, 90 right here. Notice our short side, the side opposite the 30, is our small side. The hypotenuse is always double. So to go back, I would take half. To get from here to here, I would multiply it by the square root of 3. To get from here back, I would divide by the square root of 3. Those are the general rules. Now the problem is, this pre-calc curriculum is going to emphasize the unit circle. So if we think of a circle with a radius, that radius is our spinner. As we spin it around the circle, a lot of things are going on. But the unit circle says, let the radius be 1. Now, um, you may not see this right now, but this would be my radius right here. So it's like, there it is. There's my spinner. And that's like the origin, 0, 0 on an x, y axis. And as I spin it, that's what creates my circle. That's my radius. And they're saying, no. We're going to deal with a unit circle where the radius is 1. Well, the rules for a 30, 60, 90 are the same. If the hypotenuse is 1, then the little short side is half that. Just like this was 20, this is 10. But they're going to use this unit circle for the radius 1. And then so that makes that a half. And then I have to multiply that by the square root of 3 to get this. Now, this is not wrong, but they're probably going to write it like that. Now the same thing applies to 45, 45, 90s. What you guys are used to is like, all right, you know these two sides are the same, so you multiply that by the square root of 2. Now how would I get from here back? You would divide by the square root of 2. So you can see if I did that, they cancel and I'd be left with 3. Problem is, if this is my spinner, or my radius in my imaginary circle, and that thing's spinning around and around, they're going to deal with a unit circle, which means the radius must be 1. Now remember, to get from the hypotenuse back to the side, I divide by the square root of 2. That's what gave me my 3. Well, the rules are the same. I have to divide by the square root of 2. And if you look at your math, then I have to get the square root out of there. I get the square root of 2 over 2. That's where this comes from. And this has to match. So these are the dimensions for a 45, 45, 90 unit circle. These are the dimensions for a 30, 60, 90 unit circle. So tuck that away. But now we're going to develop this idea of reference angles. This is huge in the world of trigonometry. And the beautiful thing is, not, not very often in math do you get the word always to pop up and be true, but watch this. The reference angle is always sandwiched between the x-axis and the spinner. The spinner is the hypotenuse. I'm going to develop that idea in a second. The spinner is always positive. Always create right triangle by extending from the end of the spinner to the x-axis, never to the y. So I'm going to explain these th three rules with this example. It's saying, what is the reference angle of 4 pi over 3? Well, first of all, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. 4 times 60 is 240. So what I need to do, take my spinner. Remember, my spinner always starts there. Always, always, always. That's a fourth always. And because there's an implied positive, that means up. So there's 180. Now you've got to be somewhat perfectionistic here for your brain to connect to this material. I need to go 60 degrees past that, which is right about there. So, where's my reference angle? Well, it's always sandwiched between the x-axis and the spinner. Well, here's my x-axis and here's my spinner. So my reference angle must be right there. 
The spinner is always positive, so never think of this as negative. I'll show you why. Always create a right triangle by extending from the end of the spinner to the x-axis. Here's the end of the spinner. Now, if I went that way, I'm going to get every single problem wrong because that's extending the third side to the y-axis. you got to come to the x. Now, take a look. You're like, hey, I don't have any coordinates. Well, remember, we're talking about a unit circle, which I tried to develop that idea right over here. That means my spinner has length 1. So, I know this is a 1. I also know this has to be 60, and that's my reference angle. Well, if that's 60, this is 90, that's 30, I need to go to my little short side here by cutting that in half, so that's one half, but it's negative because I'm moving left. And what do I do to this to get that side, side opposite to 60? I multiply that by the square root of 3, so I get negative square root of 3 over 2. So that's how I would find the three sides. So i got to pause this a second. All right, so you see a couple of examples on the board here. Look at the instructions. Find the coordinates of the corresponding point on a unit circle for, here's your first example. This is just telling you how far to spin your spinner. So, common sense moment. That's 45 degrees. 3 times 45 is 135 degrees. There's my spinner. There's an implied plus, meaning go up. And be careful here. Try to be perfectionistic. So I got to go 45 more, which is about, well, it's exactly halfway. And there's 45 degrees. Now I erased all the rules, but you can rewind it if you need to see it. Where's my reference angle? It's always sandwiched between my spinner and my x axis. Yes, this is 45, but that is not my reference angle. This is, by definition. How do I create my triangle? create my triangle by going back to the x-axis, not to the y. So this is the appropriate drawing here. And what they're saying is find the coordinates of the corresponding point of a unit circle, meaning the spinner is 1, and deal with this 45, 45, 90. Well, I have to divide by the square root of 2 to get here, and divide by the square root of 2 to get here. Now, I showed it already. So this is the square root of 2 over 2, but it's negative, and you have to be very careful with that because it's left, and we're finding the point. So it's left square root of 2 over 2, and then it's up square root of 2 over 2. So the point is negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And that's the coordinate point of the very end of the spinner. Now let's go to this one. Negative. So we got to go down. So our spinner starts here. We got to go down. How far? Well, pi over 6 is 30. 7 times 30 is 210. Be careful. So there's 90. There's 180. How much farther do I need to go? 30. So that is my reference angle. How do I create my right triangle? You don't go to the Y ever always back to the x. Now, if this is a unit circle, that means my spinner has length 1. Now i got to calculate the rest of the sides. This would be a half or 0.5. And then i got to multiply that by the square root of 3 to get this. So that would be the square root of 3 over 2, but it's negative. Very easy to forget that. What's my coordinate point? It's right there. It would be negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, um, one half. Give me a second. All right, let's keep this going. So now we're going to dive in to the equations of circles. Y equals mx plus b. That is your linear equation, root word line. This is your quadratic, which is just simply a parabola. Um, and we should be familiar with this, really familiar with this, and now we're going to be introduced to the general equation of a circle. This is the equation of a circle if the center of the circle is 0, 0. If it's changed, it's going to look like this, but we don't need to worry about that for today. 
so we'll just put a little line through it, but I'll plant that seed. And what do you suppose the letter R is? Well, that's the length of the radius. So to find it, we would have to take the square root of it. So this says, find the equation of a circle with center 0, 0. That's just telling you, don't mess. Don't worry about that. The center's just 0, 0. They're going to start out easy. Radius 5. Well, if the radius is 5, then i got to square it to figure out the equation of that circle. That's, it's that easy. But this says if x equals 2, what's y? So we've got to pop it in here. So we're going to go 2 squared plus y squared equals 25. That's 4. So y squared, if I subtract 4, is 21. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. So there's my two answers for y. And you can't remember the bada boom, bada bing. I mean, you can't forget. Bada boom, bada bing, do the right thing. All right, and now we're going to throw at you this whole idea of reflecting a function over the y-axis. So, start out pretty simple. Um, y equals, excuse me, f of x equals x cubed, which means y equals. There's your parent function. What does that do? Well, that's my a. If a is negative, it reflects this over the x-axis. So that would look like this. And you're like, well, I thought the title is reflecting over the y-axis. Well, I'm going to show you something. Number three, we're going to give you things that look like this. And you're like, well, what the heck is that? Well, this is just this. So we're saying, hey, c is minus 1. So our brain should go right from here to here. And we're like, wait a minute. That's just right 1. So I take the parent function, and I bump it to the right one. So essentially... See the origin is 0, 0. Now the origin is 1, 0. So it's kind of like this. And you just try to duplicate it. So now, the whole point of this was reflecting it over the y-axis. Well, look. That right there is the b. And that, if that's negative, that's going to be reflecting it over the y. But something interesting happens. If I take my parent function and I flip it over my y-axis 180 degrees, this side goes here, that side goes here, and you're like, well, that's the same as this. You're right, but we did something entirely different, so you have to be careful about the rules. Flipping over the X is not always going to match flipping it over the Y, so be very careful with that. But I just wanted to show you an example. And that does it, so good luck on your homework, you guys.